what makes a champion? At what point does a rider become great if they all have the qualities but not the stage to show the world their brilliance? There is so much energy and hype going into this immensely historic moment. Although it's been attempted in the past, the Tour de France femme hasn't really stood the test of time. This is so much more than a race. It's all the years of preparation that have led to this very moment. Women are once again competing in the Tour after a three-decade break. I never planned to be a cyclist. It's only when I started cycling that I was 25 years old and uh, at this moment I knew only Tour de France and that's the first race I actually really watched and, and enjoyed. The Tour de France is one of the biggest uh, events in the world. When I was little, I watched it with my brothers on TV. Why should I hurry? <laughs> I never thought I would be at this level one day. My name is Elise Chabet. I'm uh, Paulina Royagos. I'm racing for Canyon Sam. Je suis pas d'accord que les que les femmes femmes font du vélo. Pour quelle raison? Je trouve que c'est un sport trop dur pour une femme. Voir une, voir une femme ouais. sur un vélo, c'est moche. Vous êtes contre le cyclisme oh, féminin. Vous êtes contre les courses. Oui. Je suis contre le cyclisme féminin. Moi, j'aime trop les femmes pour les voir souffrir. Oh, c'est -ce un problème, c'est pas le mien. Je pense qu'on ne peut pas dire qu'on aime les femmes quand on ne respecte pas leurs aspirations. Comment On ne peut pas dire qu'on qu aime les femmes quand on ne respecte pas leurs aspirations. De toute façon, il faut respecter leurs activités. Faire, bon, euh, on s'exprime sur un vélo, on s'exprime dans le sport. Il n'y a pas de sport qui convienne mieux à, à des femmes qu'à des hommes. When you talk about the history of women's racing, people think, well, maybe it goes back to the 1980s, but actually, it goes back to right till the the beginning of, of, of when bikes existed. As soon as people were racing bikes, there were women racing them. What we sort of need to remember about this time was that the lives of women in the late 1800s, their lives were very controlled, restricted. They had no voting rights. They had very few economic and social freedoms. And so when the bicycle came along, it represented a complete opposition to that. It represented freedom, independence, self-reliance, all these things that, that women had been discouraged from following. As the bicycle was invented, the moment sort of intersected with what was a growing movement for women's greater freedoms and equality. In the 1890s, this was the absolute height of what is now called the bike boom. Around a third of cyclists, certainly in the UK and America, were women. You have to remember, in the 1890s, women were wearing corsets still. It's really hard to imagine how scandalous that was at the time. So these women were really passionate about what they were doing. And I think it takes a lot of courage to go against the grain of what's expected of you as a woman. Elise, you know the Duracell rabbit? Yeah, she is kind of that. Almost never losing energy, being unpredictable in her way of racing, and she always takes towards the finish line. She never gives up. She will always try to attack again and try to be as uncomfortable as possible to her opponents. To have a rider like her who was aggressive, this is for the team very motivating. Paulina, she has shown that she belongs to the best riders in the peloton. We have also seen now a growing confidence in her that she starts to believe that she actually is a really good bike rider. In 1955, there was the first ever women's Tour de France. Ainsi s'est envolé, si l'on peut dire, le premier Tour de France cycliste féminin. Un tout petit tour de 400 km, mais qui deviendra grand. Unfortunately, 
This was the final year of this particular edition of the Tour de France. The organiser felt that it didn't work. In 1984, they finally organised a women's Tour de France. So third stage comes along and you know, lots of confidence, some nerves. And we were going along probably a third into the race or two thirds into the race and uh, going down a decline. And I noticed a rider trying to come in beside me. Then all of a sudden we locked bars and went down. Tour de France, c'era solo salita. E poi quando veniva la salita io partivo a tutta, sempre scatto su scatto, finché poi con la coda dell'occhio guardi che si sono staccate tante volte l'ultimo scatto che avevo fatto che pensavo non si staccano, si staccavano, va boom, andavo. Ecco. Canine, ce n'est pas une inconnue. Elle fait même partie des favorites de ce Tour 85. And the team equipment, there was no team equipment. We brought our own bikes, we brought our own wheels. We didn't have any kit. In fact, we had to give our jerseys back. At the end of the tour, there was no training camp, there was no training, and we met each other when we got to Paris. Finally got up, I looked down, my knee was totally cut open. A couple hours later, in the hotel room, with no anesthetic, I had about, I don't know, it felt like a dozen stitches. They gave me a pillow to sort of scream into, and that was my first tour in 87. Ah, ma il tour è come leggere un romanzo, che poi hai letto una pagina oggi, domani non sai cosa c'è scritto sull'altra pagina. Tutto deve andare liscio, hai la paura di cadere, hai la paura di... Cioè finché non vedi il traguardo che finisce, hai sempre una certa tensione, ma è anche un qualcosa di meraviglioso, di quella tensione bella, che l'endralina che sale. I'm Denise Kelly. I rode the Tour de France Féminine in 87 and 89. My name is Marilyn Trout. I rode in the Tour de France in 1984 and in 1987. Io sono Maria Canis, ho vinto due Tour de France, sono arrivata tre volte seconda. I always watched the Tour de France as a kid. I loved it. My whole family watched it. It was a highlight of the summer. Like so many kids, I dreamed about riding in the Tour de France. And I had this whole fantasy that I would do it one day. And I had it all planned out. I was going to be Emile Chapelle. I would have a little moustache. You know, no one would guess. And then I would be there in the peloton and I would be riding. My name's Emily Chapel. I've been obsessively riding a bike in various forms for most of my adult life. So welcome back to the women, back where they belong, at the very top of the sport, at the Tour de France. This is so much more than a race. All the years of preparation led to this moment. The teams are ready to go. This is it. This is the Tour de France family. More women on bikes. Yeah. Here we go. This is it. Bah, sportif, euh, c'est un, une course un peu différente des hommes, il enfin, y a plus, euh, plus de mouvements, plus, euh, plus de péripéties, mais euh, pour l'instant c'est assez groupé, donc il euh, y a du suspense. Women's racing is so exciting to watch. It does give me goosebumps. Wow, my God. That's Big D and me. Uh, is that you? Yes. This is the two of you? Yep. Yeah. Start of the 87, uh, um, yeah, 87 tour. And that was our bus. We started sitting on the pavement. <laughs> no, it's actually our bus person. was the broom wagon. That was our bus. We sang in there, we told jokes in there. That Listen. looks like a great time. You know, I was supposed to be here with 
Dawson. You were, but well, look at you ended up here anyway. <laughs> it's okay. We were definitely caught by surprise. We were watching and then it gripped us. Just a flood of emotion from our personal experience. The emotion that welled up in me, the ambiance, everyone around there was so encouraging and it was completely overwhelming. I mean, we're riding the same cobbles. All that had not changed. Nothing had changed and everything had changed. on the route is it about here um well emily asked me if i wanted to follow the women's tour and you know maybe not ride the whole thing but maybe do parts of the stages and go from point to point maybe watch parts of the races i was so excited i want to be part of this I am almost speechless by the fact that I'm here and I get to ride parts of the stages that the women are going to be coming through the next day or hours later. What better way to be really involved with the race? Riding these roads to relive the moments from the past and to just reminisce brings back a wonderful feeling. It actually feels like coming home. And this is actually the route. In a few hours, the Tour de France will be riding over this tarmac, dripping their sweat on it at about three times the pace we're going. It's not as easy as it looks, you know. It's so special. While some people might have said we were the sideshow to the men, I certainly didn't feel that at that point going up. Right in front of me was a motorbike and I was there and the crowd was just like so loud. Sai sulla salita ricordo che quando ero lì, sai la gente che si sposta, una marea di gente che ti applaude. Per cui sì, c'era la stessa gente che dei professionisti eravamo anche noi e questo è anche un Sì, cioè, e, e non trovi le parole da descriverlo perché devi, devi provarlo, devi viverlo, insomma, sì. It was just overwhelming the senses and still trying to focus on the fact that I was racing my bike in the Tour de France. We were bike racers. We were bike racers, we were being validated, we were respected, and that's what we deserved. My style of racing is more to go in the breakaway and be there up the front. Yeah, try to, to make the show. My goal is the last stage, the, the uphill finish. Of course, when you start a race, you always should aim high. We, we aim for a good GC classification, ideally in the top five. In the perfect world, we can finish on the podium and the final day, a little bit dreaming is always necessary. Overall, to me, it's important that we leave a footprint in the race. There's been a lot of talking, and now it's time for action. Yeah, definitely. I feel like we all have been waiting so long for this race to like fully happen and evolve into something bigger than one day race. So definitely we're super happy and stoked to be right now, right here, and to, to be the part of the history. I am thrilled that we have Tour de France of X Zwift. The fact that we've gone from La Course to 
Tour de France Femme, and it's now eight days. Like these are very, very hopeful, insightful moments that prove, you know, progress is happening. It is possible. The more doors we open in this sport, we're gonna see a lot more little girls look up to these women and say, I could do that someday. And as we know, the saying is, if you can see it, you can be it. The sport of women's cycling has its own beauty and its own right to exist. Now we have a Tour de France. We have eight days to show who we are and how, how good of a sport we do. The sport has, is reaching now new, new heights and so let them show what, what the sport can offer. One of the things I love most about it is how feisty it is. Come on, Ali, 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 come on, go, 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 go. This event, uh, eight stages, is a very, uh, very good step uh, up for the women. That is what they earn. Huh? Elise, come, 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 come. Find your rhythm. Nous, on aime bien regarder le Tour de France homme aussi. Et je peux vous dire qu'il y a des étapes où on s'est ennuyé. Alors qu'avec les femmes, il y a toujours de l'action et on ne s'ennuie pas une seconde. I think women's racing will always be different to men's racing. It has its own things to offer, you know, they've got smaller teams and that changes the nature of the race. You know, when you've got a smaller team, you can't control the race so much, so it's less predictable and it's more exciting. What a race that was. Great results from Canyon Strand, putting a rider on the podium and winning the team competition. An amazing performance from Kasia and the team. What a ride, Kasia. So good, so good. Really, really good. The 2022's Women's Tour de France is a really landmark moment in the history of women's cycling. It's what so many activists and campaigners have been so vocal about demanding for decades. Congrats. That was good. Congrats. Now we get to see women covered in dust and sweat, with their muscles glistening and kind of grimacing as they're going up hills. We get to see women sprinting, we get to see women in breakaways, and it's going to change people's ideas of what an athlete is and what a woman can be. <laughs> Moving forward, as long as the women have the opportunity to race, the opportunities to make a living, to be able to shine in the spotlight as they deserve. The momentum is here and there's enough people behind it that that can continue. <laughs>